Hello. I know it's been a little while since I've posted a video to my channel. In fact, it's been a couple of months. Uh, don't worry, nothing has happened. I have just been incredibly busy. If you remember the Star Wars teaser I put out around last Christmas time, well, I have been putting many, many, many hours into trying to get some more work done on that project. So I've been focusing just on that, which means that other things such as the YouTube channel haven't had as much love and attention as they deserve. But now I'm trying to get back into the regular uploads. But that is not the subject of today's video. Today's video is about Apple's transition away from Intel CPUs to their own custom in-house designed Apple CPUs or ARM-based CPUs or as I'm sure some marketing person has been paying millions to come up with the name, Apple Silicon. I'm not sure if that's more or less inventive than their new operating system name of Big Sur. I know it's named after a mountain in the sort of California range. It just sounds like a bit of a strange name for an operating system. But that is not relevant. What is relevant is that uh, recently in Apple's development conference, they showed off their prototype Mac Mini with an ARM CPU and I think there may have been a MacBook Air with an ARM CPU in it too. So today's video topic is how is this transition going to affect people like us? video editors and 3D animators. Well, first of all, let's start off with video editing because that is much simpler. First of all, if you're a Final Cut Pro user, well, Apple makes Final Cut Pro, Apple makes their own CPUs, you have nothing to worry about. The transition is going to be basically seamless for you. Likewise, for DaVinci Resolve users such as myself, this is also likely to be pretty good. There's unlikely to be any problems because DaVinci Resolve uses Apple's Metal API for all the graphics processing, so I would be very surprised if there's any problems there. Now happily, the ARM-based MacBooks are going to have uh, Rosetta 2, which is a program utility, something that runs in the background that's able to convert x86 programs into ARM-based programs so that they'll run on a new ARM computer and there apparently isn't much of a performance overhead. So that's pretty nice because this brings me on to the third common video editing program, Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I believe that Premiere Pro does also support Apple's Metal API for graphics processing, so there shouldn't be too much problems there. Of course, I imagine that all three of those video, video editing programs are going to be compiled natively to work on ARM. They won't need Rosetta to work as the programmers or the companies owning each respective video program realize that there is a reasonable market for their programs on Mac and natively compiled code is going to run smoother. So for video editors, this is a great transition because you get computers that might be a bit cheaper, they'll use less power, so for laptops you'll have more battery life and they should be putting out less heat too, so less cooling noise and there shouldn't be any thermal throttling at all. So that is video editing. Now we come on to the more complicated subject of 3D graphics. In the video editing section, you will have heard me talk quite a lot about Apple's Metal Graphics Rendering API. That is going to be very, very relevant in this section. What Metal is, is um, it's basically the equivalent of like DirectX on Windows. It's Apple's own proprietary graphics API that if programmers want to use to accelerate their graphics performance by using using the GPU built into Apple computers, then they communicate via the Metal API. Or at least that's what you do if you were to code a new program. See, in the past, if you wanted to use graphics acceleration, you would use OpenCL or OpenGL. However, these have recently started to be discontinued. So the support hasn't been completely cut, but whatever version Apple last supported, that's the version that it's staying at. So a couple of programs have developed problems, such as Blender. That's why you can't use GPU rendering on a Mac in Blender 2.8. But the problem is that with the transition to ARM, basically, all of the articles and rumors that I have read say that Apple is only going to be using the Metal API on their ARM-based systems, so no OpenCL or OpenGL support at all. So any program that uses them 
isn't going to work and I'm not even sure if the Rosetta cross compiler thing is going to make the programs work. Like they might work, but with zero GPU acceleration. If you use Cinema 4D, well, you don't need to be worried because they do support Apple's metal graphics acceleration. So you're all good there. If you use uh, Maya, I'm not sure that that does support uh, the Apple Metal API, but considering in the ARM demonstration where they had a Mac mini run a reasonably complicated project in Maya, I would be surprised if that didn't work even if it doesn't have GPU acceleration at the beginning, I imagine that well, it's going to come to the ARM-based MacBooks when Maya find out that GPU rendering doesn't work. So again, that shouldn't be too much of a worry. Then there's the Substance Suite, which I use quite a lot. I don't think that uses Metal, but hopefully support's going to come because I do really like those programs and it would be nice to have GPU acceleration. But then we move on to everyone's favorite 3D program and in fact the one I use the most which is Blender. Now as I mentioned earlier if you use a Mac and you use Blender 2.8 no graphics rendering for you and I say 2.8 2.8 onwards. I I think that Eevee might be using some graphics acceleration considering that it's got a lot faster on my iMac. So on my Mac I'm using 2.83. When I use Eevee, mostly just to preview my renders, the speed in which the render loads and in which I can move the camera around is quite fast which to me suggests that my graphics card is doing something although I'm not a hundred percent sure but certainly in cycles my graphics card is doing nothing whatsoever sadly no GPU rendering for me and unless the blender foundation decides to suddenly support metal which they haven't given any indication that they're going to this situation is not going to improve with the arm MacBooks. there is one small bit of hope though which is molten VK what molten VK is, is it uses the Vulkan Graphics API, which I think is AMD's, it's reasonably open, and then it takes those Vulkan calls and converts them into metal calls. So if a developer supports Vulkan, then by extension, it should, with a little bit of tweaking, also run on Apple's Metal. And there has been a bit of talking in the Blender community about Blender supporting Molten VK, which might solve all of the GPU rendering problems. To be honest though, the biggest problem with 3D rendering on a Mac is that Mac use AMD graphics cards. In the future with the ARM-based Macs, they are apparently going to use Apple's GPUs. Well, I mean, it makes sense. They make their own CPUs. Why wouldn't they make their own GPUs too? But either way, Apple no longer uses NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is kind of the big thing. I mean, it's even in the name of half of their graphics cards now. RTX. Ray tracing. Like... Okay, that's meant to be a gaming feature, but some of the RTX features are starting to make their way into professional 3D programs, and just 3D programs in general are designed primarily to work really well with CUDA. And CUDA is for NVIDIA only, so you're going to be stuck to using a Windows-based computer or a Linux computer if you want to run an NVIDIA graphics card. You can't even run one in an eGPU with a Mac because the current generations of Mac OS X do not have any NVIDIA driver support. Okay, this video is starting to ramble a bit and go on. So, conclusion, video editors, this is fine. ARM MacBooks, great, potentially cheaper, less heat, more battery life, cool. 3D animation, in some situations, things might get a little bit better. In some situations, they might get a little bit worse, but mostly everything is going to stay the same. If you are primarily doing 3D animation and you want a computer that supports that, unfortunately, it does look like a Windows PC might be a better way to go. They have NVIDIA graphics cards and with 3D rendering and 3D animation, a big thing is just how much power you can throw at a project and as everyone knows price to performance it's quite hard to beat a windows computer so sadly if you want the best computer for 3d graphics that is definitely going to be a windows computer all hope is not lost and i will keep an eye on how the situation for blender and other 3d programs goes in regards to metal support but yes, those are my thoughts on video editing and 3D CGI animation and rendering with the new ARM MacBooks. 
I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing so as not to miss any new videos. I do have plenty of new ideas planned, including some more Blender projects and Blender tutorials, because there haven't been as many on this channel. And I do have a few camera related ideas as well. Maybe I may even get a new camera. Who knows? If you do have any videos that you'd really like to see, then please leave the suggestions in the comment section down below. And just before I go, there's uh, one other thing, which is if you have a little bit of spare time, I'm currently working or I will be involved in a web series project. It's called Gap Year in Blanston, and I have featured a couple of the episodes on this channel before, or behind the scenes talking about how they were made. Currently, there is a Kickstarter running for this project, so if you do have a bit of spare time, I would really appreciate it if you could check it out and maybe share it with some other people, because there is hopefully going to be a budget for the next episode, or a significantly higher budget from previous episodes so that they can be better, higher production value and just more entertaining in general. Thank you for watching, see you later.